Today on Cruise In, owning a classic car can be dangerous. You get the people beside you with their phones out, taking pictures of you, trying to cause an accident. Drive safely out there. Now here's a dream come true. You know, I can combine my hippie look and the rock and roll look, and how cool is that? Yep, it doesn't get much better than that. Oh yeah, it looks like an old gangster car. Yeah, it does. You nailed it. You want rare cars? We've got rare cars. And there's claimed to be less than 400 of them known to exist. Now that's rare. Plus, continue working on the Chevelle fenders. Today, we're going to paint the black for the two-tone effect. The Buckeye guys continue with the two-tone painting process. Cruise in for juvenile diabetes at D's 50s Place Diner in Barberton, Ohio, starts right now. This week on Cruise In, it's great cars for a great cause. Hi, I'm Will Burge, and we're in Barberton, Ohio at the Cruise In for Juvenile Diabetes at D's 50s Place Diner. We're raising money and raising hoods, so let's get started. All right, Bob, this is, uh, this is a mean looking ride you got behind you. What's going on? Uh, it's a 1937 Plymouth sedan. Wow, yeah. and how long have you had it? Since 92. 92, was it something you were looking for? Did you stumble across or? Well, I was looking for a coupe and I seen this thing chop. He started to chop on it. And I thought, I don't want a four door, but I'll go look at it. I got down there and it was so cool looking. It's like, I'm taking it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's aggressive looking. I mean, it's. Oh yeah, it looks like an old gangster car. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I love it. And the, in the small windshield, that's gotta be, uh, is it difficult to drive in? Well, going forwards, it's fine. But oh, that's that, the easy part, right? Yeah. yeah, I can see pretty good going forwards, in, but change the lanes or backing up, now that's a chore. So I bring my wife with me because when I go to change lanes, I look in the mirror and then I ask for a second opinion. Is there anything <laughs> out there? <laughs> and she usually sets me straight, yes or no. And What's this color called? Calypso Green. Calypso it's a 94 green. Ford Ranger Green. What would you drew you to this color, just the uniqueness? Well, the car was almost done in 94. We were looking around and I seen this Ford truck driving around. I said, I really like that color. I think it'd be nice on the street ride. Ended up saying, yeah, that's it. And then, like I said, even when the car's dirty, it don't look dirty because of the color. You know? I said, I really lucked out. It fits the personality of it well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of people, you know, think it's a Chevy color or something. I said, no, man. I never leave the house and come back without people blowing the horn, thumbing it up. So it, the street ride is definitely I guess the way to go. Well, I appreciate you showing it to us. Very cool ride, and uh, you're getting a thumbs up from us as well. How about oh, that? Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. See, that's why I said I never go nowhere that I don't get at least a few of these and a whole lot of horn blowing. Well, I don't have my license and registration on me. Can you please inform me what I did today? Because I feel like I'm under arrest here. Uh, I uh, spotted you uh, passing the double yellow a few miles back and your license tag looked like it was out of date, sir. Oh, okay, good, good. That's, hey, this is so cool. This is a spot-on Barberton police car, and uh, are you a police officer? No, I'm not. How, how long have you had this? I've had the car nine years. It's looked like this for the last five. And, and it took, did it take you those whole four years to kind of put it all together? Somewhat. I've had parts here and there, and just from other cars I've had, and just trying to get, hunting stuff up was fun, but yeah, about, it took about four years to gather everything. Was the idea right away to turn it back into a, a model police car, or did it just kind of work uh, out that yeah, way? Yeah, that's what I was looking for, because I've restored a few other police cars once before, and um, I want to do something more local, because I did a West Virginia State Police car, North Carolina car. I just want to stick it closer to home. Well, what year is this? Uh, it's a 1972 Ford Galaxy. It's, and it's pristine. Was it? Did you have to redo the interior or any of that stuff? Uh, I had to touch up some of the, some of the original interior was ripped. I had to replace that and the body pretty much was solid when I got it. And how about all the stuff on the dash, the radios and all that stuff, was that in there or did you have to hunt that down too? Uh, that stuff I had from a previous restoration, but I had no, already had it, so it just went right in. The MR6 radar gun, which is still functional today, and the uh, Motorola uh, radios and the uh, PA200 interceptor siren box, I had all that stuff already, so it just, and, and everything's period correct? Yes, everything's period correct for 1972. Wow. And was that was that the original aim too, or just to just kind of work out that way as well? Or do you want everything exactly? I want everything exactly. Yeah. I mean, because when you take it to a show, it's more better to have it exact. Uh, there's a few people who take a few liberties on some equipment, 
but I like to keep it more exact so it gives it the more realism that people can really understand how it is. It's like this car, back then they didn't have cages in them. And everybody's always asked, where's the cage at? They didn't have them then. Ah, okay. They always had the shotguns in the front exposed like that. I mean, it was just the way they were. And how did you, was Barberton pretty uh, willing to let you use the logo and they help you out with that or? Uh, when I talked to Barberton, they said, um, they told me they didn't have any pictures on file of what they had. And they just said, yeah, go ahead and do what you want. Cause since they no longer use this shield since like 1976, they didn't really. All right, so honesty time. Has everyone, anybody ever been driving like a you know what in front of you and you feel like you want to just flick the lights and pull them over? All the time. <laughs> but then also you see people, they, they see the police car even though it's old, they don't want to pass you on the highway. You look in the mirror, there's three <laughs> lanes of traffic, eighth mile behind you, and nobody wants to go over 55 miles an hour. Or you get the people beside you with their phones out, taking pictures of you, trying to cause an accident. But you know, usually I'll slow down so they can get that photo. Or if I'm on a slow street, I'll just come to a complete stop so they can get that photo and then they're done. That's good. So what, what originally got you into restoring police cars? I've always wanted to be a cop, but as I am, uh, sustained a back injury and I couldn't really finish it. But always as a kid watching Adam 12, uh, the Blues Brothers movie actually wanted me to get have an old police car just to own one. And that's how I, when I first started driving, that's what I had was an old police car. So I was just watching TV and movies from back, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s is what got me into being one. Well, I always wanted to be a police officer too, but apparently they do background checks or something <laughs> like that. So I'm not allowed to. Uh, what is your favorite part about this car? Driving it and just telling people about it. You know, when people stand back and they look at it, they're like, wow, is this what they look like? You know, and just letting kids play in it and just having it there, you know, it's a it's part of the community and the people like it. And the younger guys, they see the older car, they gotta see, well, what did my dad drive? What did my grandfather drive when they were on the force? I wanna see what they had. You know, I've had cops tell me, well, that car's so big compared to what we got today. How could they handle those things? I always say, watch the streets of San Francisco. They had no problems then. <laughs> Coming up. A lot of stuff at flea markets and stuff. I said, no, that would look cool here. That would look cool there. You know, didn't, not a whole lot of expense. But it looks like a million bucks to us next. Welcome back to the Cruise In for Juvenile Diabetes at D's 50s Place Diner. Jim, this is extremely unique what you have behind you. What do you got here? Uh, we have a 1977 Dodge van. Uh, it was kind of unique because I saved it from getting scrapped. Found it on Craigslist over in Silver Lake. I went over there to check it out. Thing was sitting in the weeds, no rims, no tires. I asked the guy, I said, you know, it looks pretty solid. You know, come up from Georgia, why would you scrap it? He goes, well, I'm, you know, I'm just done hauling stuff. He was hauling scrap with it. And I said, well, does it run? And he goes, yeah, it runs. And, so I asked him if I, you know, if I brought a battery over, we could fire it up. Went over the next day, put a battery in it, got in, hit the gas two times, still sitting on the rims. Hit the key, fired right up, idled perfect, no problem. So the next day I went and got some rims, come over and put on there and took it for a drive. I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you scrap value for it. I, I always wanted to do a combination rock and roll theme, hippie band, because I just thought they were so cool. And uh, this come along as a perfect canvas, so uh, I gutted the thing, and uh, I took, I'll take the credit for the inside, which is, you know, it has, you know, maybe we'll get a few pictures of it. It's got the uh, headliners, all peace signs, and uh, all rock and roll memorabilia. It's got albums on the headliner. And uh, a lot of the credit uh, goes to my girlfriend, Karen McKeegan, and her best friend, Sandy, because all the artwork on this was done with rust-oleum paint and a palette. It is all freehand painted. It took them about six months. Wow. Um, they wouldn't let me do it because I can only draw stick people. <laughs> so that's the way that went. But uh, yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it's a fun thing. It's one of the few vehicles you can take to the car show. People can you know, touch, climb in, look at it. And you know, it's, it's, there's no middle ground. People either walk by and shake their head or they can't get enough of it. And it, it's about memories and, uh, Having fun, and that's what it's all about, you know? Yeah, how, so let's start, we'll start with the insides is, since you had such a big hand in that. The records, uh, all the stuff in there, is all stuff you had before? Did you have to go out and find it? Or? That's all stuff I had before. I collect albums, still have an old turntable with the eight track player, everything still works, you know, old school. And uh, these are my seconds and thirds. I wouldn't tear up a good vinyl, you know? Uh, it wouldn't happen. But, that's uh, sacrilege if you collect them, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, that would be like, you know, shooting your dog or something. <laughs> you know? It wouldn't be right. But, uh, 
you know, and I just, you know, a lot of stuff at flea markets and stuff. I said, no, that would look cool here, that would look cool there. You know, didn't, not a whole lot of expense. Uh, it's not pretty, but that's why I consider it a rat rod. But. Well, you know what though, I think it is. I mean, you look at the outside, the artwork on it, it's fantastic. So that took them six months to get done. Six months, yeah. Was it just something every night going out there doing a little bit of time? Pretty much, on weekends, evenings, and, and you know, I, I had a lot of the ideas and uh, they just, you know, I, I told them what I wanted, looked some stuff up on the internet, said, yeah, that's close to what I want. Can you adjust it? And they just went to town. Then I let them put some of their own touches on. Uh, uh, it's just been a really cool thing. And uh, on the left front fender is kind of really special and touching to my heart because uh, I'm the last of the Mohicans, Smiths, whatever. Um, my father, World War II vet, two Purple Hearts, two Silver Stars. My brother, 30-year Vietnam vet in the Air Force. And the Cardinal represents my mom. Uh, she was like the second mother nature. She would feed cardinals and squirrels out of her hands. So oh, wow. That, that fender, I come back from a three-day uh, vacation with my friends on a NASCAR race, and I come back, and that fender was the open canvas, and this is what they come up with. And uh, Oh, that's so, so cool. So when I saw it, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, I, I broke down a little bit, because it, it, it's just, it just it's perfect to honor my family. And, uh, Man, it's from, from a van full of Harley scrap to, to a time machine that takes you back, huh? That's it, man. And, and like I said earlier, people, they love it. You know, they, the ones that get in there, oh, you know, it's from, oh, I had that album. You know, can I sit in there? Oh, I remember those beanbag chairs. Yeah. It just, it just it inspires memories. It makes people think about other times and stuff. It's fun. That's what it's all about. You can have fun. It's, it's cool because you can go with rat rods or you can go with really nice vehicles like my neighbor here, you know? And it's, it's all good. You know, everybody has different tastes and that's what makes the car scene so cool now. Baby boomers like me are not gonna be around forever. So it's cool to get the young guys into so to keep the thing going, you know? Great community. Great community. The car guys are, are the best. Well, Michael, this is not only a very nice ride and a very sharp looking one, but a very rare one. What do you got behind you? I have a 1966 Galaxy 7 liter. It's one of 1,700 that were made and there's claimed to be less than 400 of them known to exist. It's a hard top four speed and it was the only time that Ford introduced the uh, model for an engine and it's the introduction of the Thunderbird 428 motor. Yeah, you said leader. That sounds different for this. Right well, here. everybody thinks it's a Canadian car, but uh, no, they wanted to, I think it was at the time they were trying to buy Ferrari and it kind of fell through. So they wanted a little, little bit of a European twist to it, make it a sporty sports car type car. So it was like a, uh, an executive's uh, muscle car. Yeah, this is kind of like uh, luxury and muscle meet together, right? Exactly, that's what they were after to get the executive uh, take his boss out in a sporty type car. But it, it's so, such an unusual car, I took it to the uh, Ford Carlisle Nationals and it was the 2016 honoree there. Wow. So it's getting a little reputation. Yeah. So. <laughs> How did you, was this something you were looking for? How did you come across this? I had a car like this in high school. I'm sure it, you, I'm sure you, uh, it was, it meant exactly as much as this one does, right? Well, yes it did, but, but it wasn't that unusual a car then, because yeah. it was only five years old, and I really didn't know what I had then. Mm. So, uh, so I always liked that car, because I had a lot of high school memories in it. So I got a, I found another one, and uh, this one, when I got it, was pretty close to what you see but I took it and took it all apart and did a seven year restoration on it, had every nut and bolt and screw out of it. And, uh, and what you see is uh, seven years worth of effort. What was the uh, toughest part to restore in that? Finding parts for it. Really? <laughs> I had uh, calls to the desert to find different sheet metal and, uh, and uh, they just don't reproduce uh, much for 65, 66 galaxies. So there's no repop stuff like you know, you can go from a catalog on some of these other cars and get the whole car, you know, but not this car. Now, do you run into other people with this car ever? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it can't happen. If it's only 17, it can't happen very often. Huh? The only time I've seen other seven liter cars is when I went to Carlisle Nationals and I belong to the seven liter, international seven liter registry. And there was members there. In high school, if you had known that that car was going to be as rare as it is now, I would I mean, how, would have been different? How would it, would it ended up differently for well, you? Well, what happened with that car was I, I wanted a brand new Mach 1 Mustang. So I talked my dad into co-signing for the car. They didn't want to give me nothing for a trade-in. So I said, if you co-sign for the car, I'll give you, I'll give you my car. 
which he did. And, and uh, I don't know whatever happened to it, but I got the Mach 1. <laughs> yeah, now you got this back too. You got, I got this a back. It's a win-win, right? And this is a way nicer car than that one was. And it was only five years old, but this is a way nicer car. Who's, oh, by the way, who's the passenger in the back seat back there? That's Coco the monkey. <laughs> and, and there's a story with that too. My mom, when I was a kid, in the back of the magazines, they always had an ad for a squirrel monkey for 1995, came with a leash and a cage, and I always wanted one. But they never would let me have one. So a year before she died, on my birthday, she gave me Coco the monkey. So Coco's been riding with me ever since. It probably smells a lot better than the actual the ones on the back of the I'm pretty catalog, sure so. that was a wise move on their part <laughs> that I did not get the monkey. <laughs> yeah, you'd have been investing a lot of air fresheners for this bad boy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Next up. I like to put the darker color on last just because it's easier to co cover a lighter color. The Buckeye guys started two-tone paint process. Next. Welcome to this week's edition of Cruising with the Buckeye Guys. Today again, I have Mr. Bruce with me and we're gonna continue working on the Chevelle Fenders. Today, we're going to paint the black for the two-tone effect. Bruce is gonna demonstrate that. Bruce is awesome. Bruce, show them how it's done. We uh, applied a coat of epoxy primer, which is a good adhesion uh, promoter for bare metal. It also gives you a uniform finish uh, to apply your color. Put three coats of Sickens color red over the epoxy after sufficient drying time. Then uh, afterwards, we masked off to get ready for the two-tone black. We put, I like to put the darker color on last just because it's easier to co cover a lighter color. I usually throttle my trigger a little bit. I do not give full trigger. I'll try and work on the first, uh, when I'm working with the first coat. Um, mainly because you got a lot of nooks and crannies in particular areas, it just makes it a little easier. So instead of pulling a complete trigger as though you were clear coating or putting color on an exterior sheet metal, particular areas like your jams, I'll try and trigger the uh, throttle the trigger a little bit. Just just seems to work out better for me. Thank you for tuning in with this week's edition of Cruising with the Buckeye Guys. As you can see, Mr. Bruce is awesome. He did all this great work on this custom paint job for the 65 Chevelle. We can do the work for you here too. Give us a call at 330-533-4757. Coming up. I put it on my bucket list. Uh, we wanted to get another one. Mission accomplished. Next on Cruise In. From project to pride and joy, the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration can make your dreams come true. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have over 100 years of experience. They do research, can communicate every detail of the restoration process, and their restorations win big time awards. Buckeye Classic Car Restoration cars have been winning awards since 2001. Let the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration turn your project into an award winner. Now back to the cruising for Juvenile Diabetes at D's 50s Place Diner in Barberton, Ohio. Terry, this is one of the cleanest rides I've seen in a while. What are you standing in front of right now? It's a 1964 Ford Falcon Sprint. How long have you had this? 
a uh, couple years. Yeah? Did you have to do some restoration to it? or? I didn't do the restoration, but I uh, went all over it and uh, kind of got it looking the, the way it is now. Was it something you were looking for for a while? Did you stumble across it? Well, uh, when I met my wife, I had a 64 Falcon. And uh, here a few years ago, five or six years ago, I put it on my bucket list. Uh, we wanted to get another one. And I searched for about three years and wow. found this. Wow, so there was a, a, I mean, high and low on the internet, all that stuff. Where'd it you end up travel, finding it? Yeah, where'd you end up finding that? Uh, I actually found it here. Really? After going all over the country for a while. Right under your nose, it's right, right under here, your backyard. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how that works out sometimes. Isn't it? And it's, I mean, it is absolutely gorgeous. How long did you have your, your original one? Uh, probably about four years. And then, of course, one of those stories when you meet your wife and... Well, you know what? You know you married a good one because she lets you get your toy back yes. later, so... It was a bucket list, yes. And we you're out it. here today at the Cruising for Juvenile Diabetes, which, which has a personal meaning to you, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, it does. My youngest daughter uh, was diagnosed with juvenile diabetes between her junior and senior year of high school. And I think it's very important to come out and support this. Uh, it takes money to fight these diseases and they are doing wonderful, wonderful things. And, and, and I think one of the cool things about the car community is that you have people like yourself who care about a cause and you come out, I mean, look, all the people here, I mean, this is, this is kind of like a family when you come out, isn't it? Well, and these, you know, these, the, we see these guys at car shows all over and it's just a wonderful, it's a wonderful group of people. Yeah, it really is. And this is, uh, I gotta tell you, for, I, it's great that we're raising money too, but it's a little bit of a perk that we get to see cars like yours here. Hey, thank you for coming out and supporting a great cause, and thank you for bringing this beautiful ride out as well. Well, thank you. And thank your wife for letting you bring, get yes. another one, you know what I mean? Absolutely. What an amazing day out here at the Cruise Inn for Juvenile Diabetes. Great to see the Barberton community come together, great cars, and an even better cause. Thanks to Ron and everybody out here at Dee's 50s Place Diner, and thanks to you for tuning in. I'm Will Burge saying so long, Cruise Inn.